For Christmas, I'd made my brother a chessboard because he recently got into the hobby with a friend of his. But I also owed him a chess set, so I figured it'd be a good excuse to practice out my new lathe skills. You can see here the quick little jig I made to use my faceplate to mount the small blanks I was using to turn each piece. Had to hold onto it tightly or it would slip away like that, but I got the hang of it. I usually had a model that I used first that I could use as a reference as I went. Uh, any of the wood turners out there are probably shaking their heads at most everything about my technique, but I think you'll see that even by the end of this video, when I was 32 pieces in, I'd improved pretty dramatically. I knew these weren't all going to look perfectly like each other, but that's okay, because it was a handmade set and I wanted it to look that way. I got a bit too aggressive with my parting tool here and stalled the lathe. Fortunately, my lathe is not that powerful and it wasn't that big a deal. I did have to then free the parting tool from the gap that I'd created, which happened kind of neatly when I unscrewed it. After I'd mostly parted each blank, it was relatively quick work with the saw to uh, finish that off, and then I would just clean up the, the bottom edge with the chisel. Took me a little bit longer here because I didn't realize I was accidentally using the ripping and not the crosscut half of my saw. With one down, it was just a matter of making another seven. That fourth one in the row you can see has a bit of tear out on it. I did actually go and remake that one later on. Mahogany and maple turn a little bit differently. Uh, they're just very different woods, so that was a bit of an adjustment. I think in the end I preferred the mahogany, but I ended up liking maple more as I went to and I got better with the lathe. All the mahogany you see used is actually left over from the legs of an old piano that I rescued. That's been the basis of several of my projects now. With all the pawns done, I thought I'd celebrate by doing a fun little cinematic element here. As you can see, it was not the most successful thing I've ever attempted. These things have a bit of bounce in them. Close enough. After the ponds, I had to start getting into the somewhat more complicated pieces. The rooks were first up because they have a pretty straightforward shape, essentially just a series of cylinders. I experimented more with using different types of tools, the parting tool and the scrapers and all that. Um, just because the bull gouge wasn't super well suited to several of the 
Mostly just because the bowl gouge wasn't super well suited to some of the cuts I needed to make here. And because I wanted to get more experience with different types of turning. I know this is probably a dodgy use of the parting tool, but it worked out okay and I was careful. When it came time to cut the crenellations up at the top of the rooks, I tried a few different things, chiseling, filing. Couldn't quite get the purchase I needed. I switched to a handsaw, but this dovetail saw isn't very sharp, and I just couldn't quite get the, the start that I wanted without risking more tear out. So as you can hear, I definitely did not go and cheat with the bandsaw and create the starters, which I was then able to file clean. I tried this a couple different ways and I found it much easier to do while it was still mounted to the faceplate so I had a little bit more purchase. You can see I'd gotten much better at sawing through those quickly. Practice will do that. For anyone curious, the blanks were about an inch and a quarter square that I then used the router table to round over. It's not strictly necessary to do that, but it meant a little bit less turning work and a little less uh, wear on the turning tools that I had to deal with. On to the bishops, the hardest part was definitely getting that little knob right at the top just perfect one of the more finicky parts. Given that my lathe is kept right in front of a parked car in the garage, it's a bit awkward to get the camera in there to film, so I apologize in advance that the angles and the lighting are not always perfect. I did the best I could with the situation I got. To carve the slots on the heads of the bishops, all I had to do was make a quick cut on the bandsaw. I forgot to film it. Now this is the one everyone asked me about as I was doing this. How was I going to manage to turn a non-circular piece? Well, the answer is you don't really. 
with the knights, you turn the widest perimeter that you can in the shape. There's a bunch of different ways to carve the actual shape. I happen to be very comfortable on my bandsaw, um, and so I was plenty happy to just do it like this. Uh, I would not recommend, generally speaking, having your hands that close to the blade. Uh, but again, I am very comfortable with that bandsaw. I'm, I can predict it quite well. And I was only ever taking small cuts at any given time. My blade was definitely overkill on this, but it was what I had on there at the time. Worked out okay. Once the basic carving was done, I could go in, shape the bottom a little bit better, and turn it off. There was definitely a little bit more finesse work that I had to do after I'd done the bandsaw carving, but honestly, as I went, I got better with the bandsaw to make that a pretty minimal process, just rounding over any rough spots. And here comes the cavalry. These were definitely the most time-consuming parts to make, no question about it. The royals, by comparison, the kings and queens, were actually fairly straightforward. And the best thing about the kings and queens compared to the rest of the pieces is you only have to make one of each color for each. With the kings, I kept mostly the same pattern as the queens, the same general head shape, though I did add that slight extra bead at the top to give them the essence of a, of a crown. And then the shoulder area, I made uh, just a little bit heftier uh, and with a couple beads in it just to beef up the piece a little bit, give it more contrast. And here are all the pieces, uh, pretty much complete before finish. Uh, it was pointed out to me that my kings were just a little too similar to the queens, and so I thought, well, I'll give them crowns. These are just brass furniture tacks, I happen to have a bunch of them lying around. Uh, with a little pilot hole, they went in pretty easily. Not that easily, but pretty easily. I was careful not to pound them all the way home until I was sure that it was going to be centered. These things do have a tendency to bend a little bit. But in the end, I got it there. The mahogany one went a lot faster. For finishing, I went sort of the easy way. I cut a soda can in half, dumped the pieces in and wiped them off, gave them a really solid coat of Danish oil. Made the process pretty fast and pretty easy while also making sure I wasn't missing any spots. 
and here it is in the wild. You can see the chessboard I built here. I didn't make a video of it because it was in my Christmas crunch time, but it is a pretty straightforward uh, piece just with maple and mahogany squares cut out and glued onto a piece of plywood with a simple miter frame around it. And I think it complements the pieces really well. I'd like to give a brief shout out to my brother's roommate, Arthur, who helped film this much better than my usual cinematography for this ending clip here. Let me know in the comments what your next move here would be. Thank you very much for watching, and make sure to subscribe.